All right, so we're going to talk some more about census data and charts. Uh, as I mentioned a little bit last time, uh, the reason we cover like kind of census data in this class is because invariably, if you're ever doing anything with kind of data science, you will almost always have at some you know at some point deal with census data just because it's it's really good. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to talk about some announcements. All right, so there's no homework today, kinda. Um, in that uh, we are going to release project one today. It'll probably be later in the day. Uh, there'll be a Piazza announcement once it gets released. Um, but so a project is basically like a lab or a homework. Um, however, uh, it's bigger, right? So it'll take longer. Um, and you can also work on it as a group, which should be assigned during the discussion section tomorrow. So make sure you are at discussion section to find out what your group is and you can submit the project as a group, okay? So one thing to note is on Gradescope, when you want to submit as a group, it is not entirely obvious how to do so. So basically you kind of go to do a submission and then you attach other people to it, okay? So just kind of look at the user interface. It is there, it's just, it can be a little subtle. Um, so the way we are gonna do projects in this class, okay, is that, there's like a first chunk, and that is kind of got a checkpoint date, which won't really be graded. We'll give you some feedback on how you did it, just that you submitted it. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to hold in that seat. Um, okay, so just uh, the checkpoint is just make sure you're on track and make sure you're moving forward. Okay, so if it's got some errors, don't worry about them. It won't be graded until the actual project is done. It's just to make sure that you've made some progress. Um, this may actually be directly related to my personality type, where I will do all of it 10 minutes before it's due. Uh, that will not work in this case. So that's why we have the checkpoint in there. Okay. So uh, it will be released today. And then the next, the checkpoint is next Thursday. And then its completion is October 6th, which, because I'm very bad with dates, I have no idea when that is. Oh, it's actually the Thursday afterwards. Um, so you should have some weekends in there. You should have plenty of time to work on it. Any questions? Yeah. So I would actually prefer people to work as groups rather than doing it individually. And the reason is, is because if you are working in data science or in software uh, or actually really just about anything, um, you will work as teams, okay? So uh, it is almost always better to learn how to collaborate with others. Uh, so I would actually prefer you to work as groups for this. Um, you know, if it doesn't work out or if somebody's dropping the ball or whatever, you can always talk to myself or Rohan about that, um, you know, and kind of deal with it individually. But I would prefer to work as groups. Any other questions? All right, cool. Um, next thing is the midterm is the 18th of October. Uh, as I said before uh, in prior lecture, um, I will probably do a midterm review in this lecture, uh, but I may not if we run out of time. There will definitely be one in the discussion section before uh, the 18th. Uh, so make sure you go to that discussion section. The discussion section tomorrow, there is no lab, okay? Instead, it's an opportunity to take a look at the project, get a handle on the groups, um, bring up any questions that you might have with any of the lectures or any of that stuff uh, so that you can uh, you know, bring them up there. Um, and that's why there's gonna be no lab this week. Okay, any other questions? Cool, all right. So first we start off with a question. Uh, let's see. So what function adds a column to a table? Okay, and it is actually only, there's actually more than one choice. It's just pick the one here that works. There are other options as well. They just aren't listed here. They're like, they're, they go into your participation grade, so. but not as much that you got it right or wrong as much as that you did it. Um, I use it more to figure out how many people are on the same page. 
All right. Get your answers in. I'm closing it. And so here we have table width underscore columns. And the reason I bring it up is because there's also, I believe, a width column. Uh, we had a long discussion with one student the other day about pluralization on these kinds of things matters sometimes. So if you're choosing the width columns, it probably wants more than one column at a time versus width column, which will be just one. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind, especially if you feel like you're getting kind of a weird error. Uh, we actually have a similar example uh, later in the lecture, I think. All right, so cool. So let's recap a little bit on table. So we create a table by read table with a file name, or we can create an empty table. Um, and then you can do all the, all the cool things on a table once you create it. And then this is a little bit of a recap. We have numerical attributes. Okay, so those are ones that are treated like numbers. Okay, and we also have categorical attributes, which are what are referred to as listed from a fixed inventory, or basically, you know, imagine a drop down list, right? I'm sure you have filled out many an internet form where there is a drop down list that is a categorical choice, right? So you can't compare them. But there are lots of numbers that are also categorical. For example, like the UID is a, is a good example. Social security number, if you have one, is also a good example. All right. All right. So here's a question. This should be easy. All right, get those answers in. All right. So it is a categorical. Um, so uh, yeah, so categorical, most of you got it right. Um, but uh, just kind of keep in mind, so it comes from a fixed inventory. So in other words, you know, there's only a certain number of BUIDs in the world. Okay, so that is a fixed inventory, even though it does change, right? So there you go. Categorical. So let's go on to talk a little bit about the census. Uh, so we talked about this a bit last time. Um, so every 10 years in the US, it is constitutionally required that they do a census um, and it's used to determine representation. Uh, however, it is estimated every year by the uh, Euro US Bureau of the Census. Easy for me to say. Um, and then columns have column dependent values uh, or interpretations. Sorry, that's a better way to put it. Uh, that's probably why I wrote it on the slide. So the sex column, for example, one is male and two is female. Pop estimate, this indicates that it's an estimate rather than a, um, uh, a hard number. Uh, and so the 2010 gives you the year of that estimate. Um, and sometimes it also has a special meaning. So for example, zero in the sex column is the total and age, if it's 999, is the total of all ages. Um, and I think we talked a little bit about why this is, right? Because they don't wanna have to carry another piece of data, like another column on the census to indicate this data, right? Or have a separate table or whatever. So they kind of do what's called encode information in the existing table. This can be super confusing. It can be really difficult. It causes sometimes errors but it is significantly more data storage efficient, okay? Incredibly common. Um, and so like not just in the census, but in everything. You may even have encountered it. All right, so we're gonna do another question. Um, so just map, um, you know, the, the left side to the right side. Oh, and I forgot to mention there is there are is a lecture notebook uh, in the usual place, uh, so grab it if you can.
All right, get those answers in. I expect this to take a little bit longer because the, the UI I'm sure is somewhat rough. Oh, we got a good attendance number today, 4,999, speaking up. All right, last chance. And I'm gonna close it. And then show you the answers, which looks like this. I still find this thing very hard to read, so sometimes I have to do it like in my head. But so column, or this, you know, the left side maps to D over there. So if there's a zero in the sex column, it's the total of all male and female. Uh, in the age column, if there's a 999, then it's the total of all ages. Um, and if it's, a, uh, sorry, if, the, if there's a one in the sex column, then it's male, and a two in the sex column, it's female. Okay. And right. So, so this part is the, the kind of important bit, right? Is that, um, you know, you can't compare the age 12 data to the 999 data unless you're looking at it as part of the total, right? Because they're not, um, like, it's not people who are 999. Not that you're likely to encounter those, but you never know. All right. So, going on to the note. Book. All right, and we got to run this first. Okay. So the first thing we do, uh, and this is the first time I think where I kind of try to pre-fill stuff for you um, so that it gets a little bit easier. But basically we're just gonna load the census data from 2014, okay? Um, it's not complete, it's only a part of it. Uh, just kind of be aware of that. It's really just to show as an example, there is significantly more data in a typical one, but as you might imagine, right, if I gave you the entire census data and asked you to load it like this, it's gonna take a while, right? So I wanna make, make it so that we can do it reasonably in the lecture. Um, so, however, you can just go download this anytime you want, right? It is a publicly accessible website uh, and you can just go download it and get the data yourself and do whatever you want with it. Um, so, uh, basically these are just examples of what we talked about. So, as you can see, right, um, this would be all males and females who are seven years old. In 2010, there were 4 million some odd of them. And then they, also did the estimate for that year, right? They might've done it in 2009 so that you can do comparisons of how good the estimates are. Um, and then you have this estimate over here, which is, uh, actually, I can't, no, it's this estimate. That's the one I was talking about. And then 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. All right. So how would we go about comparing the total number of men, women, and both for the real data of 2010 and the estimated data of 2014? All right, so if y'all wanna play with that a little bit. But really all, sorry, all we're doing right here is just the first step. So all I wanna do is limit my data set to only the columns I care about. So how would I do that? Not the whole, not like the whole question yet. Anybody have any ideas? And then what? Oh, actually, I'll start typing it, make it a little help. All right, so partial is what I'm gonna call it. And we're gonna say full, select, and then what do I put next? Anybody else? Oh, good. All right, which ones do you think we should use? Census. Uh, what else? I want to do them in a particular order, so I'm not going to type them until you do them, list them all. What are we actually looking at, right? 
we want to compare what and what. Sorry. Right. So I'm going to do sex, right? And then I'm going to do age. And you don't actually have to do them in this order. It's just that that way my later code will be correct. Um, and then you would do census 2010 pop. And then get your commas right. And pop, it's pop estimate 2014, right? And normally what I obviously do is cut and paste this from above because uh, it would obviously be more efficient and more likely to be correct. All right, so now what I can do though is I can actually give it some better column labels. And when I say better, I mean shorter because that way I can type them faster. Um, so in order to do that, there's a cool feature that we're gonna say simple. We're gonna name, we have to give it a new, we don't have to give it a new name necessarily, um, but I'm going to just for the sake of doing this. Um, but remember, I don't wanna just throw it away. I want to actually keep it around. So there's another method called relabeled, okay? To which you give it the column position and the name that you wanna give it, okay? And then also I wanna do re, labeled three and 2014. Okay, so a couple things I wanna point out here. Um, so this relabeled method just lets you relabel them, right? Which seems obvious. Um, and if you notice, right? Uh, so this is zero, one, two. So the two -ith spot, right? And then uh, the three is this one. So zero, one, two, three. Um, and I just give it new labels. But if you also notice is like, I'm kind of cascading this here. So I can only call relabeled, actually I can't remember if this is true for sure, but for the sake of the example, I'm only gonna do one column at a time. So we know that this action returns a table, right? Okay, with the new label. So that means I can just, daisy chain it's usually referred to as another method knowing that this will do it via table first okay and then i can do another relabel and do column three and then i'm going to assign it to simple that makes sense all right so just keep in mind i think you might have done a little bit of this already you know in some of the examples the homeworks or whatever but just so you understand daisy chaining is a thing um Generally speaking, you got to be careful of this because you can end up with things that are very unreadable. Okay. So use it with restraint. Okay. Uh, you don't want to have a single line that just keeps going. Okay. Break it up into multiple tables, multiple steps. You are way more likely to um, find syntax errors that way. You know, like if you can kind of see it all at once. Um, and future self, right? For future you will thank you if you ever have to go back and look at it because now you can quickly understand what you were trying to do rather than trying to parse this massive string, right? So uh, let me run, actually I'm gonna simple and I'm going to show it. However, this time, it, unlike most of our examples thus far, I'm only gonna show four rows, okay? So sometimes you don't, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to. What did I do wrong? That's right, relabeled. Oh, I didn't run this one. <laughs> there we go, much better. Uh, okay, so as you can see, it will only show me the four. The nice thing is it does keep the number of rows that it didn't show you. So if you want to know how many rows there are, you can easily get to that information as well. Obviously, you can also print out num rows, but uh, for convenience. Um, so sometimes I'll just do something like this just to make sure I got what I thought I intended, right? Um, and but I don't necessarily want to print the whole table or whatever. Um, so let's move on to the kind of real question. Uh, does anybody have any ideas of what? Let's see. We're not going to do a real comparison. Oh, let's talk through it. Um, so now I have simple, maybe. And we're just going to sort it by age. 
and say descending equals true, true. And so now we can see, right? These are all ages, okay? And we see this is all genders, all ages, right? This is all men, this is all women. Um, and what the totals were in 2010 and 2014, um, as well as all the individual ages, okay? But so this is where we start to think uh, kind of more like a scientist, right? Rather than a programmer. Um, does anybody know why? Um, so between 2010 and 2014, it's four years. Where? Oh, let me actually sort it the other way so that I can show something else. Oh, I got out of order in my notes. That's what happened. Uh, I was supposed to do the, this one first, but we will do this one second instead. So if we look at this one, wait. so all, yeah, all genders, zero age, right? Okay, so all the kids who were born that year, basically, there's what, uh, let me see, uh, 3.9 million in 2010 um, and 3.9 and a half million or something in 2014. Um, so what do you expect? Uh, shoot, not enough. Show and no. Twenty. So, what do you expect that you can guess, right? So, like, if there's three point nine million kids born in the year twenty ten, then twenty fourteen should be at four years old, right? You would think a a much closer number, right? So, why do you think that this number? is missing, I don't know, am I reading that number right? Yeah, 100,000 kids, give or take. Any ideas? So why, so you would expect that this number should be equal to that number, right? Because they, they aged four years, right? So why is this number, not quite 100,000, maybe 50,000 missing kids. Okay, early child death, right? So some of the kids might have died in there, right? What else? Immigration. So there actually may be, like, there, like you almost wonder why there aren't more kids, right? Because theoretically, you know, there's not a lot of people who are immigrating when the kid is zero, right? They're more likely to be immigrating when the kid is like three, you know, at least, right? Um, okay, what else? Any other ideas? I'd also throw out there just bad estimation, right? Because it's an estimate in 2014. So these are the kind of things that you want to notice as a data scientist, right? You want to kind of look at the data and think about why, you know, should these numbers match and why don't they? Right, and think about what could you do differently so that you could figure out, you know, is there something you can do to estimate maybe population growth or the shrinkage, right, of the population when it's over time. All right, so here, I think we're gonna go back to the slides. Let me just look real quick. Yeah, well, no, yes, no, wait, hold on, is there another slide? No, okay, so we're gonna jump right into here. All right. So one of the things that might help us uh, figure that out without staring at a bunch of numbers, okay, is I'm going to make a couple more tables, basically. All right. So now I have just an everyone table. Okay. So now this is all people 
um, of this age. So every gender, but it's just kind of merged together so that we get rid of the gender differentiation. So this is a little easier to understand if you're trying to figure out, right, the change in population between 2010 and 2014. So, but then we can get even better by, what do you all think? What should we do here that would make it a little easier to tell what's going on? And there was a big hint in the section what we're in is called visualization. Make a graph, exactly. So we can do every one plot is the name of the graph we're gonna use. And, oops. And, sorry. This is, uh, let me see if I can get, yeah, maybe I can get more of it on the screen. All right. So when I run that plot, let's see if I can get both on there, it'd be better, okay. Um, so what I can do is actually look at the uh, line for that particular year, for example, uh, you know, if I want to look at something about the population data, right? Um, so clearly what happens after 60-ish? People start dying, right? They, they get old and they die. They're not all just leaving the U.S., right? Um, which is also possible, but seems unlikely. Uh, but so... And according to this graph, right, there's no one in the census who lived past 100. So I knew I did that for a reason. That reminds me to switch. All right. So let's talk about charts and graphs. Um, okay, so if you want to plot two numerical variables, remember numerical versus categorical, Two good options are a line graph, which in Python land, we're gonna call a plot. People here remember a line graph from some earlier schooling. Um, basically it's a line, right? Um, you have a X axis and a Y axis, and then a position has an X and Y value. And that indicates where you make a dot and eventually you have enough dots that you make a line. Make sense? Okay, because in fact, if you look at this, this, this line, right, it looks continuous, like it looks all connected, but technically it's not, right? Because we don't have data for, let's say, June of 2001. Does that make sense? Like we don't have data for, you know, July of 2010. We only have those year points. And yeah, it's a little bit compressed here because we do have 2003, but the stuff in between is just a guess, right? It's just a line between the two, but we don't actually know for sure. There could be, I mean, I don't know why this would happen, but there could be in July of 2004, that number here could be up here, right? Like, we don't know. So you just have to take it a little bit with a grain of salt um, when you have big data sets like this. And this is actually, sorry, oh, this is actually the number of movies in this picture, my bad. Um, and so this is how much uh, money they were making per year uh, for the big movies. Um, and then, but we can also do a scatter plot. And a scatter plot shows us uh, kind of more like relationships, okay? So we can see there's the number of movies. So 40 movies made about whatever that looks like, maybe 80 million, okay? Um, whereas you have some outliers, right? You had, wait, yeah. So you have 80 movies that only made about 50 million. And then you have like 15 movies that made a lot of money at 150 million. Does that make sense? Sorry, I forgot I'd switch uh, topics. We're gonna talk more about the movies in a minute. All right, good. All right, so the key to remember here is plots and scatters are useful for numerical variables, okay? All right, so now the next question is when should you use a line graph versus a scatter plot, okay? And so I said some of this, but it gives you a little bit more kind of, you know, formally. So line plots are useful for sequential data or when what you wanna look at is sequential data, okay? So in other words, we weren't trying to figure out with the movies um, in the right side, we weren't trying to figure out 
like some sort of line about how they were uh, performing. What we were looking at is how many movies were making 150 million, which is a little bit of a different question than, uh, you know, looking at, you know, kind of a direct line of, of movies and dollar values. Okay. So, uh, so line plots are really good for sequential differences in the Y values are meaningful. So that's, that's this way. And there's only one Y value for each X value. Okay. So in other words, you can't make a line like that, at least in 2D space, if there's only one, or excuse me, if there's more than one Y value for any given X. Of course, I can't think of an example of when that would happen, but it does happen. Um, so, and usually when you're looking at a, uh, a line a line graph or a line plot or a plot um, is often time or distance on the bottom, okay? So it's usually a pretty good guess that it's gonna be one of those two. Then they use scatter plots when the data is not really sequential. So this is really good for when you're looking for associations. So is there an association between the, you know, uh, how many movies there are that came out and how much they made, okay? All right, make sense? All right, then we'll ask you a question. All right, so what is not a reason to use a line plot? All right, get those answers in. Final moments. Still wondering if I should try to use a timer for these. All right, so pretty good. 97 of you said that when you're looking for associations and that is also the correct answer. So that's good. All right, so these are important differences. The reason I keep kind of hitting it is because, uh, well, not only is it really important to, to understand this and know when to use what, um, I've had prior classes that really struggled with this particular concept. So uh, I tend to hit it a little harder now. All right, another question. What type of plot is best for finding associations? Um, and so this is where like wording gets a little confusing. So we kind of shorten line plot to plot, but a scatter is also a scatter plot, okay? So we tend to shorten line plot to plot and we shorten scatter plot to scatter. Again, because programmers are lazy. All right, final answers. All right. And as kind of evidenced by the prior question, right? The scatter plot is what you want to do when you're looking for associations. So let's move on to categorical data, right? So we're able to build graphs for numerical data. So what if we want to do a graph for categorical data? All right, before I show anything else, anybody have any theories as to a graph that you might use for categorical data? It's probably the other most common graph you've used. Bar charts, exactly. Um, however, unlike, at least in my experience, see, I thought there was more stuff. It, the slide the tag was a lot. Um, so we're gonna go through line plots um, about making some more interesting ones real quick. Um, because as I just said, my slides directive was a lie. All right, so we talked about this already. Wait, did we already do these? Okay, so, so we did some of this, but not all of it. So uh, you can cut and paste from above if you like. Um, 
So I'm just gonna do that same line plot again, but now I want to do some labeling. So one way we can make a label is by doing just a comment, All right? So we can just, wait, where did my comment go? Oh, sorry, I cut and pasted badly. So I can just add a comment, right, to the cell, and that indicates a little bit of labeling, right? It makes it a little bit easier to understand what you're trying to do. So these comments are, generally speaking, kind of for yourself, right? So future self uh, gets a little bit of a hint as to what you were doing as past self. All right. But there's also nicer, oh boy, there's also nicer ways to do it. Um, and that one, we can actually, I'm basically going to take the same line from above where we're just doing the plot over and over again. I probably could have just left this in there for you. Um, and, but this time I'm gonna actually add a printed label because one of the nice features with um, doing a Jupyter Notebook is that when you, uh, if you do kind of the, uh, the graph and then also just do a print statement, it will print it with the graph like that, okay? So I can just print out US population. Hey, that's cool. Right. And then but then I can actually do a somewhat nicer one where let me just taking the same thing again. Okay. Except I'm going to remove the comments. Okay, and then I can actually do plots title US population. And before I type all or get too far with all of this, this um, isn't generally speaking required for this class. It's kind of like if you want to do nicer formatting, that's what I was afraid of. I think it's just plot. Why? Oh, you are code, not markdown. Ah, it's sorry. I won't show this demo. I can't. I have. I don't have the cheat sheet. Basically, there's a. This thing is actually creating a a, a graph, and then you can modify that graph. But you got to remember what the name of it is. Um, and I'm blanking because I should have done this demo better. No, because it's it's what this is outputting. Yeah, which is defined up here. Did I the second time? Yeah, that's what I thought I did. Oh no, you're right. Uh, so yeah, so you can just do. Um, so the thing I was pointing out up here is that it's because that says plots and I couldn't remember what was typed in there. So that's why I wasn't gonna bother. But because apparently I just had a stupid mistake, uh, you can see that it does work. And there's a whole mess of other options here. You can like change colors and you can, you know, rejigger the Y axis. If you wanna take away the numerical, uh, the scientific notation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But those are well beyond the, uh, the requirements of this class. Um, but it is there if you want to play around with it. Um, so, see what I was going to show for my next example. Let me fix my uh, cheat sheet so I don't have this problem in the future. <clears throat> All right. But then I can also actually plot two different lines because, as you remember, we were talking earlier about. Oops, um, what if we wanted to see, we wanted to compare the age information. And so we can go to back to everyone and say plot. But we, if we just say age, it'll actually give us both. 
Um, and the reason, here's one of the reasons why you might want to mess with the colors, right? Because if you don't really like that yellow and blue, you can change them. Um, but as you can see, uh, in 2014, um, the population largely is kind of up a little bit, right? Um, but then, you know, it's kind of like people go away around the same amount of time. Um, but people are kind of living a bit longer, right? So that's why this can be really useful because you can kind of plot them against each other and say, oh, in 2010, people are not living as long as they are in 2014. Okay, and obviously that becomes even more interesting when you compare multiple actual census. All right. So then we can go on to say, let's do just to kind of keep up. We can also compare um, the men and women um, by going back to our earlier table, the no 99 table. Um, so basically, I'll give you, hopefully I'll give you a second to type this in, but I'm gonna say, okay, give me just the men, okay? Uh, no 999, which was the table where I dropped some of the other columns. Um, and so I'm just gonna pull out all the ones where the sex is equal to one. Then I'm actually gonna drop the sex column altogether because it's kind of redundant now, right? Because this table only has men in it, only has males in it. That makes sense? Same here, I'm gonna do the same exact thing with females, except obviously I'm gonna use the sex equal to two. Okay? All right, so that's gonna give me two new tables, one that's just men and one that's just women. Then I'm gonna make a third table and this one I'll type out so that you can try to keep up. Um, 2014 table. And age. I know I spelled that wrong, but I'll fix it in a second. Nope. All right, who's the fastest typist is really the question. Okay, and then I'm just gonna print it. But I want to point out a couple more things in here. All right, does anybody see anything sketchy about where I get the age value from? Any ideas? Why am I pointing that out? Right, I only pull it from the males table. Why is that okay? Because they're the same in both, right? So just keep in mind, right? This is the kind of thing where I'd probably make a comment, okay? To say, this is why I chose it from the males table because it's the same in both for future self, right? Um, and then, I think that's it. So now I have all of the people, uh, you know, I have all the men, all the women um, by age uh, in 2014. So what I can now do is, as you might guess, is what if I plot those ages now? Uh, 2014 dot plot. Okay. And now I can look at the life expectancy of men versus women in 2014. Right. And so, as you can see, there's actually slightly more men born. Right. Um, and then, you know, and they kind of stay. Uh, higher, but then they start to get closer to even with the women. Um, and then there's a spike on the women as soon as you get to whatever this is, like age 50, 55, something like that. Um, and then the women stay at the higher population throughout the rest. Okay, so theories. 
What does that make you start to think? There's the really obvious one, which you probably already know. Women tend to live longer than men right off the bat. But what happens here? Right? Like this is, this is probably not just normal, you know, old age, right? They're 25, 30 years old. So why do they get closer there? Well, this one's definitely only affecting men. So it's not an event that only that affects both. It's one that only affects men because the women are staying about the same, right? Like the men are dropping off, right? They're coming down to being the same population count as the women. So, you know, one theory, unproven, but interesting, is men tend to engage in riskier behaviors in their 20s than women do. And risky in this sense being like driving too fast, okay? So this tells you, right, that, um, you know, that maybe there's something going on there uh, that causes more men to not live past, you know, whatever, 25, 30, than it does women, right? Obviously, we need a lot more research before we can say what that is, but it does tell us there might be something interesting there. All right, so now let's do something even more complicated. Let's calculate the percent of women uh, for each age, okay? So we're just gonna kind of go through this, 2014. Column males plus nope. Okay, so this is basically going to give us our total, right? Um, now, obviously, we actually have that on a table already that we could be getting it from, but let's say we didn't, and so we wanted to calculate it. So this is going to give us our total. Um, and so, oops. So then I can move on and say, okay, what are the percent female? And do 2014 column females. Nope, I knew I dropped the water. Oh my goodness. Uh, and then I can divide by the total. And then multiply, multi, no, multiply by 100. Oops, I didn't mean to do that yet. And then I'm just going to print it out, right? Okay, so now I have an array for kind of any given age that is the percent female, right? And so this should tell us in, you know, kind of data form the same thing as the plot did before, which, you know, the, there's slightly less women at zero, right? And then it starts to even out. And I was guessing earlier between you know 20 and 30 years old, right? And then the women definitely increase in the population by actually in some parts by quite a lot, right? Uh, compared to the overall, uh, the population of the men. Right, so if you want hard numbers versus just a graph. Um, and then we can also make it a little easier to say female, we can say round. And in this case, we're just gonna do it, oops, and then print it. Um, so this just is the exact same data, right? But just a little bit easier to read. It's been rounded to three places um, because that's what this three indicates. And so it's a little bit more obvious what's going on. Uh, I would still prefer the, the uh, line graph personally, um, but if you need the actual numbers, this is a good way to get it. Um, but then we can also um, actually drop that into our table, right? And so normally what I would actually probably do this is, is kind of more like when I'm creating the table. So what I'm gonna do is on my same table, I'm gonna add a column called percent female and then use the values I had up here. Um, and then I'm just going to print it. Okay, so now we know what the percent 
the percentages are. And then I can now plot that a little differently by doing pop 2014 plot age percent female, female. Oops. Oh, forgot a quote. Okay. So now I'm getting basically the same kind of information as I was doing before, but now I'm just actually looking at it directly as a percentage. So it's even more obvious, right? That it's starting at 50% here, right? But then it's going up through uh, even 80% by the time you get to the last data, right? So the percent of women is much higher as, as you get over there. Um, so yeah, so slightly below 50% up until let's say, I don't know, maybe 35 or something. Um, and then it just continues to rise after that. Let's see what's next. All right, so anybody find, well, actually let's not talk about that too much. Um, well, kind of, all right. So if you look at this picture, right? This looks like a really sharp curve, right? Does anybody know why it looks like such a sharp curve? Like, is it actually a really sharp curve? Right, so, so because the y-axis is starting at 50 instead of zero, it kind of dra dra dramatizes the effect because you're looking at a smaller window. So if we look at it by setting the y limit, and I'll show you how to do that. Here, basically I can set the Y limit to be zero to 100. Okay, so it'll force it all the way down to zero and go up to 100 it's because there's, you actually have some compression as well because the top of this is only 80%, right? So if I do the exact same thing, but set that Y limit, as you can see, that is a much less pronounced graph, right? So that's really important that you can snapshot a part of the data and it can give a very different a very different idea of what's going on. So yeah, it's certainly dramatic out here. Here, let's scroll a little bit so you can see the whole graph. It's certainly dramatic out here, right? In the 80 plus range, but in the rest of it, it's not anywhere near as dramatic as it looks in that first graph, right? So keep that in mind when you're trying to present a lot of this information. Um, yeah, I don't know why I had that slides thing in there at all. I wasn't supposed to get there yet at all. All right, so so let's talk about scatter plots. Uh, and uh, you know, we've we've already revealed the data a little bit because I showed you the uh, the slide that had the kind of resultant graphs. But here's how we actually make those graphs. So we're going to look instead at a different table, which or a different set of data, which is this actors data, which is basically an actor how much money they made on how many movies and then it calculates the average per movie which movie had the biggest uh money you know how much that they made the most money on um and what's their gross uh income uh for that i think yeah for that movie um so just uh i thought the date was in here but um this data is a little dated so uh there's probably you know more actors in there now but you know for the sake of the argument um all right so as we discussed earlier let's say we want to look at the number of movies and the total gross amount okay so the total amount they made what would the best graph be to give us a sense of, of where they are? Any ideas? Oops, did I scroll too far? Yes. Uh, I don't know who said it, but yes, <laughs> a scatter plot. Um, so I'll type it in so that you can keep up. Um, but so I'm going to say actors.scatter and number of movies 
total gross. Okay, and the way and or, and what I'm doing here, right, is I'm saying um, the first value I pass is going to be the x-axis, and the the second value I pass is going to be the y-axis. Okay, so I could reverse them and get a different graph, obviously. Um, but so now this tells us that kind of contrary to what you might expect, right? Um, the cluster is kind of here, right? When you're when you make whatever this is, 70 something movies, right? You like it's it doesn't seem you would kind of expect it to be the number of movies will kind of linearly go with the amount of money you made, right? Um you know, we all know about movies though, like some movies are huge blockbusters or whatever. So obviously it'll be skewed, um, but it, you know, I kind of expect it to be more linear, right? You know, but we do have, uh, let's see if, where I talk about it. Yeah, we'll get to it in a minute. Okay. Um, so as I kind of just said, we can do the exact same thing, except we can reverse it and, It'll kind of show it to us. Oh no, sorry. This is actually average per movie. Um, so this is number of movies and then average per movie. Um, and so the number of movies drives the average down, which you a little bit expect, right? Because if you have eighty movies, even if they make a lot of money, the average, you know, there's going to be duds in that eighty, right? So it's going to average out. It's going to start to drive it down. Um, so really, what you want to be is a person who's good at picking big movies, right? Um, and so you can work on 20 movies and make you know, more money per, per movie. Um, and so you might be better off there. That one up there is super interesting, right? So one movie or one-ish movie um, and made a whole bunch of money on that one-ish movie. And uh, I'm not sure if I remember the story behind this because I am terrible at um, pop culture. Um, but so, you know, I'm just going to kind of pick that person out to go figure out what the outlier is and find out who it is. Okay. All right. So that is Anthony Daniels made, uh, I think that's actually in hundreds of thousands. So I think it's, no, it's got to be, that's not 3 billion though. So, I don't know, let's just say a whole bunch of money. I think it's, maybe it is 3 billion. So the point being is that this one person, has anybody ever heard of this actor? Uh, oops. I want to say, is it C-3PO or is it uh, Chewbacca? Okay, yeah, I, I was like, no, I can't remember. All right, so, uh, the, you know, the metal droid that's in the, the Star Wars movies made basically seven movies, only movies he ever did, right? Um, and made a whole bunch of money on those movies. So obviously I'm very good at picking which movies are the right ones to work on. Which I just think is kind of crazy. And I, like, I don't think you ever see his face, right? Because he's, you know, an Android. Or actually not even an Android, robot. Uh, okay, so... Let's go back to the slides and hopefully, actually, let's go, let me just see what's next. Okay, yeah, so I talked about this already, so let's just uh, dive into the bar charts. Okay, so um, you should have this already, but basically this is top movies as of 2017 um, that made you know a certain amount of money. So it's the name of the movie, the studio that produced it, the gross money, um, and then adjusted, I think, for uh, expenses and then, oh no, sorry, adjusted for year. Um, so in other words, like, um, you know, uh, uh, due to inflation, I can't talk there. Uh, and then uh, the year it came out, right? So Gone with the Wind, clearly uh, the winner um, and, you know, a bunch of others. So, however, we're gonna introduce another new function here. Okay, and we're just gonna pull out the top 10 adjusted. Um, and we're gonna to say top 
movies dot take np dot arrange a range sorry um ten okay so what this does is take pulls rows out by position okay so that I can say I want you know row twenty two and I want row twenty six and fifty three and whatever okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass this A range here, which is going to generate zero to nine, right? And so that's going to give me the top 10 movies. Make sense? Okay. So take can be handy if you want to look at just the subset for some particular thing. Um, and then we can, this is the part I need to remember to look for. Uh, so we can round the information by doing top 10 adjusted column. Nope. And then Slash. I'm probably going to get the zeros wrong here. What's, wait, do I want 100,000? No, I want a million. Right? Yeah. And then round it to three. And then hopefully I did it right. Then we're going to add that array, which is what we just got, back into our table. So top 10 adjusted equals top 10 adjusted um and we're going to call it millions and millions so i would commonly do this as one line um maybe depending on how long it was um but i clearly have a bug i think so too <laughs> This one? No, I got that one. So a, a tip on, on uh, doing debugging. So table object is not callable. Oh, I forgot the method. And I forgot the 10. Okay, so now we've converted it to millions. That's what I thought it was. So 179 million um, adjusted. Uh, and so what we could do, right, as I give the example here, um, is let's do a line plot of this data, which is gonna be super weird because we don't use line plots on categorical data. Okay. I don't I don't even like I don't I don't even know what to say, right? Like it tells us nothing, right? Uh, except that maybe we can make some pretty art. Okay, so this is usually when you're making this error, okay, where you're using the wrong type of graph, um, you'll get something like this. It'll just be like bizarro land. However, sometimes data actually does look like this, so not always, but it's kind of like a you know, like a hint that maybe you have something screwball. All right. So instead, going back to uh, someone's earlier answer, we are going to do a bar chart. Okay. So just like we did plot, okay, we're going to give bar H. And the reason for that, I'll tell you in a second, which will have the title as one axis and the mount uh, as, as the other axis. Okay. So almost always in this class, we're gonna do horizontal bar charts. You've probably mostly seen vertical bar charts, um, but because a lot of the examples and stuff that they're just long, so they fit on the screen much better if they're horizontal. So bar H is a horizontal bar graph, just bar is a vertical bar graph, 
okay? So it's just a cosmetic difference, um, but it has two different methods. One will give you a vertical one, one will give you a horizontal one. Um, and given that the fact that it's just bar for the vertical, clearly that is what most people expect to use. But like I said, in this class, trying to do this vertically would be very difficult to read. So long story short, now we can visually very quickly see that Gone with the Wind, hands down winner, Star Wars, relatively close second. But it actually, you know, Sound of Music drops off pretty good. Okay. But that tells us a little bit about this data. Um, and we treat it categorically because of the, you know, it's things, it's not, you know, it's not numbers. All right, let's see what else. Okay, so I've done a ton of mistakes today, so I'm not sure this is worthwhile, but I'm gonna show it to you anyway. Um, but what I wanted to show you, and I'm just gonna cut and paste this because it is known wrong. Okay, so this kind of problem, at least for me, happens all the time, okay? And so I don't know about all of you, but I, I have a hard time quickly glancing at this and seeing where the bug is, okay, or seeing where the error is. So instead, what I tend to do is you can break the problem up. And I kind of did it before uh, as an example, but I'll do it here so you can see what I'm talking about. So what I do is do it in kind of pieces, okay? So I take, I usually will cut and paste the exact thing I have there, and then I put it here just to see what I get. Do I get an error or do I get what I expect, right? Okay, so that worked, right? So now I'm gonna break it up again or kind of break it up again, I guess. And I'm gonna call that array, I'm gonna call it age array, okay? And kind of put the same thing there. So now I've actually assigned it to this age array and I can kind of approach the problem slightly differently by now trying to add it to our table again, or a table, but I continue to have an error, right? So I, I'm still not 100% sure what's going on. Um, so where did it go? And so eventually I've realized now that I have you know, all the inputs are right. So what, what am I doing wrong? And I realized, okay, so two positional arguments were given, were expected, but three were given. Um, so that kind of gives me a hint that at least I know the scope of where the problem is, right? I know it's something to do with this method and that object, right? So hopefully that'll lead me to realize that I actually want to do with column, okay? And so now it works, right? But so because I broke the problem up, it makes it a lot easier to figure out where the bug is. So it's more just like a hint. Um, but then we can also use that and make another bar chart, uh, which will show us the age of the movie compared to this year, right? So Gone with the Wind is almost the same age as uh, Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. Um, you know, and then all the other ones that were big money makers, right, are much more recent. Um, you know, there's like a, you know, like even this gap, right, is the Ten Commandments is, uh, I don't know, let's say 65 years old. Um, but then there's a pretty big gap there. And then Titanic being 